Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Basman Council official podcast. My name is Kyle. I'll be your host. And joining us today, we have Luke Culling, Social Value Officer for Morgan Sindel. Luke, thank you very much for joining us. No problem at all. Nice to be here. Nice to meet you too. How are you today? Yeah, very good. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Glad to hear it. So this week has been, as I'm sure you were, National Apprenticeship Week. And before we touch on that, I just would like to ask you, so as I mentioned, you are a social value officer for Morgan Sindel. So yeah. what does that mean? What does a social value officer entail? What does that yeah, mean so for Morgan Sindel? It, it entails quite a lot of stuff. Um, so the one thing I will say about the job that we do as social value officers is every day is different. No two days are the same. Um, a lot of the work that we do is obviously based out in the communities where we've yep. got contracts. We're the repairs and maintenance contractor here in Basildon for Basildon Council. And alongside the main repairs and maintenance contract, we have what are called social value commitments. So that could be work experience opportunities, that could be working in the local communities to support garden projects, working in community centres, training, um, schools, colleges, all kinds of different things. So my job is really varied alongside the main contract that we have here, which is with the repairs and maintenance. But mm. it kind of sits to the side of it, but alongside it. But it's I say to people when they ask me that question, I get to do all the nice stuff. I get to, go, I get, get to do all the stuff that people don't, um, don't necessarily see. Um, but yeah, I get to engage with a lot of different people, a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different ages, and, and do a real wide variety of stuff. M- meeting a lot of people must must be exciting. Getting to know a lot of people, a lot of different people, from a lot of different backgrounds. Yeah, and, and understanding the challenges that they yeah. have, whether that be with regards to work or, or, or even with their housing at times. Um, but yeah, it's, it is really interesting. You do get to meet some really interesting mm-hmm. characters doing what we do. So, how does that role fit into like apprenticeships? So we, as an organisation, recruit apprentices, mm-hmm. um, and part of that process is, or the majority of that process is looked after by the social value team. Yeah. Um, so it all depends on the needs of the business. So I think that people maybe get a little bit confused when they think about construction or property services is, is where we work, that it's always going to be about trades. We're always going to need plumbers, gas engineers, electricians, carpenters, but actually we're a lot more than that. You know, we do need office based staff Mm -hmm. and the role of a social value officer is to go out and make sure that people in the local area know about the opportunities that we have, but also um, to run programs where we need to recruit those people from. Um, So yeah, we we play a big part in the recruitment of our apprentices um, and also the journey that they go on. So as an employee, they get two days volunteering each year. Um, and we like to get our apprentices out to volunteer on some of the social value projects that we do in the area as well. Okay, that sounds very interesting. And I guess that creates a very good segue into the main topic of this podcast, which is National Apprenticeship Week. So just before we get into what you're currently doing, so what have Morgan Sindel done in the past for apprentices? Yeah, so we've, we've recruited apprentices from the beginning. Um, we've kind of done it in different ways over the years so again I mentioned before it's about the needs of the business a lot of the time um, and we've recruited quite sporadically so we might need see a need for a multi-trade apprentice mm. or an admin apprentice or a customer service apprentice but what we did last year for the first time is we ran what we called our own apprenticeship academy so we had all of the contracts we have all over the country um, during the same week during the summer holidays um, we recruited I think it was 25 apprentices last year across all of our contracts, but we did that all at the same time. So we advertised those vacancies um, in spring. Um, and then in the summer, we pulled a week together, a week's worth of activities uh, for all of the candidates that were shortlisted to attend to kind of get a bit more of an idea and understanding of who yeah. we are and what the roles look like. Okay, so was that, we said that was a pretty successful thing that you did? Yeah, really successful. Yeah. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges with apprenticeships is that People don't always know when to look or where to look. Mm. Um, and by bringing all of those roles together at once, you know, we had 26, 27 positions in London, in Basildon, uh, you know, across across sort of majority across the southeast. Yeah. Um, and because they were all advertised at the same time, it meant that you knew you were going to get a high volume of candidates. As I say, we had twenty between 25 and 30 roles and we had over 160 candidates apply for them. Um, Bizarrely, we had people applying from Liverpool and Sheffield for roles in Essex, and that's obviously something that we have to deal with and we have to filter out. But yeah, it, it was a real success. Um, and I think, you know, if you speak to some of the apprentices that have started their journey with us in the last six months, um, they probably will give you the answer that actually that, that initial first phase of starting with Morgan Cinder has been a positive experience because having worked in apprenticeships before I joined yeah. this role and before I joined Morgan Cinder Property Services, 
those first three to six months are vital from an employer's perspective. So yeah, I think we've done it right and, and I hope that we get it right again this year. What pressure should we be running this year? So a wide variety again. Yep. <laughs> um, I, don't, I can't give you an exact answer as to what roles there'll be, yep. but there will be roles coming out. Um, to give you a bit of a feel for what we had last year, we had admin and customer service apprenticeships. We had traditional trade apprenticeship, apprenticeships, sorry. So sort of gas, electrical, yep. multi-trade engineers, but also um, commercial apprentices, mm-hmm. um, trainee quantity surveyors. So a real kind of broad spectrum of, mm. of, of opportunities to work for us, not just as you would maybe think in a property services company, we need engineers, we need trainee plumbers, we need a wide variety. But you know, they, they'll all be coming out in the next, probably in the next four to six weeks mm. that our vacancies will start to come live. So you say you have a like very wide, very broad range of apprenticeships. You also, do you, or do you then send them out to a very wide, very broad range of people? So do, do you look for like people of all ages or do you just focus on that like particular? No, group? no. And, and I, again, I think this is maybe a misconception when it comes to apprenticeships. Mm. Things have changed in apprenticeships probably over the last five to 10 years. I think people's view of apprenticeships where it's for 16 to 24 mm. year olds, um, that's not the case. Uh, you know, we've got some apprentices that um, started with us last year that are in their 30s. They've seen an opportunity to to kind of change their career path. Yep. And I think that, you know, if people are in a position where they can, um, don't be afraid of looking at an apprenticeship. It might be financially a challenge to begin with, um, but actually in the long run, you know, you're potentially going to be doing something that you've always wanted to do as mm. a job. And whether you're 16 coming out of school, or whether you're 25, 26, or even older than that, and, and you kind of want to look at something different, don't be afraid to apply for apprenticeships because they're open to everybody. Yeah, I, see, I, I personally, there, there, I imagine there are some people out there, they particularly like older people, who feel like that it's a it's a bit too late to like to start that to start the apprenticeship journey. But it's never too late, really, is it? It's not about it's not about when you start the race. I guess it's about how you finish. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, and and it is. If you if you've always had the desire, I always say to people, if I had my time again, I would do it. I would change my career. I would look at doing. I would probably look at getting a trade. That's where I would have gone. I didn't know enough about it when I was younger um, to know about apprenticeships. And and I mean, we're talking a good twenty five years ago when I would have been looking. Um, but now there's there's so much more opportunity there. There's so much more uh, potential for people. And and yeah, don't be don't don't think that you can't do it. If, you, if, if you're in a position in your life now and you're thinking, actually, I'd like to do something different or you've got an idea or you really know what you want to do, go yeah. out there and chase it because there are opportunities there mm-hmm. and it's a career. You're, you're, it's a stepping stone for you to get qualified in a career that you, you've you potentially always wanted to do, whether you're, you know, like, like I say, my age or, or even sometimes older as well. So why, would, why do you run apprenticeships? What is the thing, main thing that you like about running apprenticeships in Morgan Sindel? For me, it's about future proof. Yeah. Um, it's about succession planning. And, and I think that's where maybe organizations kind of miss the point of apprenticeships. They kind of look at it and go, oh, we need to recruit apprentices because we're made to recruit apprentices or we have to, or because it looks good. Actually, think about what it looks like and what it means for your business. So as I'm sure people are aware, Construction is an aging industry. You know, we've got an aging workforce and it's really hard to get and attract young new talent into our industry. We've got to do it because we can't continue being an aged workforce. We need young people to come in. We need fresh ideas and new ideas and ways of working. Um, And with the amount of technology now that is in our industry, um, who better to learn and who better to come in and do it than the young people that are out there. So that's kind of the, the, the biggest thing for me is it's about succession planning for the business. Who's your next supervisor going to be? Well, what you'd really like to see that to be is for that to be one of your apprentices. So your apprentices to go through that journey with you as an organization. And in five, 10, 15 years time, that apprentice becomes a supervisor who has gone 360, has gone from being an apprentice to line managing and supervising and supporting their own apprentices. And we've got cases of that in the organization at the moment as well. So it, it, it's a really, for me, it's all about preparing for the future. Yeah, that sounds, yeah, that all sounds really good. Your apprenticeship's not necessarily about like just merely getting a qualification. It's also about investing in a career that you want to build, build long term, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, if you kind of not, I always say to young people when we go and do a lot of stuff in schools, and I always get asked, oh, why do you go into schools and why do you, what do you do? Most people in this area, or most people that I speak to in schools don't know about us. So they don't know about us as an organization, but they also don't know about the opportunities in our area, in, in, our, in our business. And I think that's important is, is sharing that information, giving that sort of detail to them 
to encourage them to look at us as an option for them when they're, you know, whatever their next steps might be. Okay, so how can the people apply for your apprenticeships? How can people get on board? So all of our apprenticeships are advertised on our website. Um, as I said, last year, all of those roles came out at the same time. So if you go onto our website, which again, um, you know, we'll have all of our full-time qualified roles, all of our office-based roles, but they will have all of our apprenticeships. If you go onto our careers page on our website, go onto that, go onto that tab, type in the word apprentice, all of the opportunities that we have will all be there. You might well find them on the National Apprenticeship website where the government encourages young people to go and register to find opportunities. But what will happen if you go on there is it will redirect you to our own website to apply through our ATS system. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking and you are interested, go onto our Morgan Sindel Property Services website when you get that opportunity. Okay. I. Do you believe that is a wrap now? Luke, thank you very much for joining us. How have you found this podcasting experience? Yeah, no, brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's the first time I've ever done anything like this. <laughs> yeah, that seems um, to be the case for a lot of people, but they've always been very natural and that's the same for you as well. Thank you, I appreciate it. And thank you for watching at home. If any of you are interested in looking for apprenticeships with Morgan Sindel, a link to their website will be in the description. And yeah, once again, thank you for watching and like and subscribe to stay tuned for the next one.